What's up everyone, my name is Curtis, and this is my channel, Hot Action Fishing and Fab. I uh, just wrapped up part 6, this is part going on to part 7. Um, I did the stringers and the bulkheads in the last episode. Um, this episode I'm going to be installing the floor. Uh, right out of the gate, I have to f clean up and do a little sanding on the stringers and the bulkheads that I have, you know, that I installed in the last episode. Um, just got to clean those up because the floor is going to bond to those. I mean, right now there's some resin and uh, excess fiberglass that sticks up over top of the stringer. Uh, so I'm going to get that sanded down, get that cleaned up, and I'm going to get my foam board out from behind the shed and uh, start templating the floor out, and then get it transferred onto my divinus cell, and get it cut up, glassed up, and then bonded into the boat. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll get to it. Just cleaning up the surface where the floor is going to be bonded to with my angle grinder. I just measured the inside dimension of my floor and then cut the foam board down into two pieces instead of one large piece to have to deal with. It makes it much easier just to do it in multiple pieces than do it in one large piece. For the most part, got her trimmed out, looking pretty sweet. Um, I thought I was going to do it in more pieces, but I was able to nail it with just doing it in two pieces. Um, I was able to just to come up from underneath with my Sharpie marker and trace um, the storage boxes onto my foam board and just cut it out that way, and it dropped in almost beautifully, almost perfect. Um, a little bit more work I got to do. This is the chine that it's going to be resting on. So... I don't know if you can really tell, but that's a, uh, there's like probably like a, I don't know, inch and a half, two inch gap right there, and it's on both sides, so I'm going to tighten up my template a little bit more by uh, filling up that gap. The closer you can get your templates made up, the less likely you're going to wreck your, your uh, you know, final product. You don't want to waste much of that divin itself, because it's, you know, it's not cheap, it's, I get it for like 120 bucks a sheet, so yeah, you don't want to waste it. I always tell everyone one of the huge advantages to using Divinicel is you don't have to use power tools. You can cut everything with a razor knife and psh, nice and simple. And all right, there we go. I got the Divinicel I cut out behind me. Um, got it put in the boat just for a little final test fit before I go lay fiberglass over top of it. Um, on the other, on, on the underside, I'm gonna do two ounces of chop strand, two layers. So there's gonna be four ounces total of chop strand matting on the bottom side of this uh, Divinicel for the floor. Uh, I'm gonna go back to where I was just sharpie markering out the the template for onto the Divinicel. Gosh, I can't talk. Um, but I'm going to go back there, and that's where I'm going to cut out my chop strand because that's the, the biggest surface area that I have that's nice and flat that's going to be usable um, to keep this panel flat when I lay it up. Because that's what you want to do when you're doing something this big. You want to make sure you're, you're keeping it flat. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to wipe this thing down, first cut out the chop strand matting, then wipe it down with acetone, and then mix up my resin and get it all laid up. What I'm doing here is wetting out a strip of 1708. It's approximately four or five inches wide. And what I'm using this for is just to put a little more glass in where my seams of my two divinicels cells are coming together. 
it could potentially be a weak spot in the floor if you were not to use the 1708 in that where the two pieces of Divinicel come together. So better be safe than sorry. for the outside edge of the boat. Uh, other than that, yep, let it tick overnight. I'll let this thing cure overnight. And it's got some stuff on it. But uh, yeah, I forgot to lay some kind of like plastic down or anything like that for this. So uh, let's hope this thing comes up nice and easy. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. And then it's stick, thank goodness. <laughs> thing up cutting out the outside and sanding it all down um, yeah first drop in it, it fits perfect I'm pretty happy with it next I'm gonna pull this floor back out and then I'm gonna install the cleats around the outside uh, up on the front bulkhead and then back here on these storage boxes I'm um, gonna support the floor in the area where it's gonna be lacking some support um, so yeah that's the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna pop this floor out and get after those cleats all right, I decided to make these cleats out of the three quarter ounce Kusa board that I've been using. And uh, I think I made them an inch and a half tall by two inches wide. And then I 45 the edges on three sides and then left the top side obviously flat where the, uh, the floor is gonna rest on. This is what I had in mind for my cleats. Um, I wanted to do the 45s like that, 45, 45, 45, and then this flat top, um, just so I don't have to use a ton of peanut butter to bond these cleats in, in place. Um, just pretty much just make my peanut butter, stick a little, you know, not very much peanut butter, stick a little bit on the back, put it in place, and then I should be able to lay my fiberglass, my 1708, I'm gonna two, do two layers of 1708 to hold this cleat in place and uh, just stick it right in place and uh, lay some glass over top of it and that'll be it for cleats wise and I think this will be plenty strong enough and do exactly what I want it to do because it doesn't have to span very much it only got to span I don't know 20 inches in one spot and then I don't know maybe 24 inches in another spot at the most and uh, yeah, and then I'll be have fillets and two layers of 7, 2, and 8 tab in the flooring as well. It's going to be plenty strong enough. It's going to hold, you know, anybody who gets in the boat with no problems at all. So, yeah, here we go. Keep on going. All right, all I did was just sketched. Pretty much just laid a flat piece of kusa that I had laying around that was a machined edge. Um or the cut edge from the factory, so it's nice and flat. I uh, just laid it on where my floor is gonna sit at in the front there, and then laid it on the top of the stringer, and then came in underneath my sharp marker and marked where that cleat's gonna be, and then same thing with that one, same thing on the other side. This one, what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I just got this, like I said, this flat piece. Um, this is the cut edge from the factory. I'm gonna measure, you know, I'm gonna measure, you know, Nothing in a boat is perfect. You can get a freaking 
you can buy a hundred plus thousand dollar bay boat and you can pull measurements on it and the thing's not going to be perfectly square. I don't, I don't care what manufacturer is. Not very much stuff in the boat world's made perfectly square. So, um, I hate using the word close enough, but this is probably going to be close enough, okay? Um, so all I'm going to do is just pull a measurement from from the, uh, the hull to the bottom of the kusa and then that'll give me my measurement over here but you know that's not the right exactly I'm going for I'm gonna measure this side and this side make sure they're you know the measurements are identical on both sides and that'll make sure that this is gonna be flat across from there to there and that'll be a give me a point where I can put my cleat in over here and over there Real quick, I was thinking to myself what I wanted to do for drainage in the bottom of this boat. And then I thought about it. This is probably really might be dumb of me to do. Uh, because when I build this boat, I might want to fill it with foam. But I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. I wasn't planning on filling the, the underneath the floor with foam anyways. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drill limber holes into both the bulkheads, the front bulkhead as well, and the back bulkhead. But with the back bulkhead, which I was already planning on doing this anyways because the way I got the bilge pump stuff, um, or the way I got the, the bilge area set up, um, if water got into the into the, the boat itself, the water would go up into the, the front storage compartment. So I was gonna have it plugged off anyways, and then if that ever took on water um, or I had excess water from taking a wave over the bow or something like that something stupid happened or you know just from rain that had water in it I'd be able to just pull the plugs back there and let it drain out so I was thinking that I really don't need to run PVC pipe through the bottom of the hall which I'm hope I don't regret it but like I said, I'm not gonna run foam or nothing like that, so I don't have to worry about that getting saturated with foam. I'm gonna drill my holes, my limber holes, uh, through the middle of the boat, and pretty much just let it drain out like it would normally drain out, I guess, if there was, you know, being just open boat. Uh, I'm gonna coat the inside of the holes with epoxy that I drill, just to make sure that, I know it's I'm using Kusa and Divinacel, that you don't have to worry about, worry about water saturation, but just for peace of mind, just seal it up good. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like I said, I'll bond the floor down, drill the limber holes, bond the floor down, and then I'll plug up the back two holes back here with plugs. And then if I ever have to drain the front hatch, the front storage area, I'll be able to just pull those plugs, and then it will just drain out from the front hatch into this compartment and that compartment, and then it would drain through another hole through these two, and then it would drain into here, drain into there and then it would drain out those back two holes. So maybe it's a freaking stupid me to do. Maybe it's me freaking taking an easy way out, just not having to run PVC pipe and stuff like that. But I don't know, sounds like simple plan and that's what I'm gonna run with. <laughs> Alright, I'm not pulling any like critical dimensions to set my little cleats like these. There's the little cleats. I'm not pulling any critical measurements. I'm just, you know, going off of that line that I drew with the board. And uh, same thing with back here. Just, you know, cleats. This isn't the right cleat for this one, but I had to shorten it up a little bit. But boom, right there. You know, no critical measurements this way, side to side, but this measurement from, uh, you know where the floor is going to touch obviously it needs to be as close as you possibly can get it um there's a little bit of playroom with uh peanut butter and stuff like that that you're going to put on top of this in order for your floor to bond down on onto but uh you need to get it as close as you can so boom that's what that sharp market line's for 
It's like that. Next. Got everything all wiped down with acetone. All my spots where I'm putting everything's all cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, I'm not mixing in any of my chopped fibers, just straight fume silica. Um, these things, there's not going to be any gaps or anything like that. They're going to bond straight to the hull. And then they're going to get two layers of 1708 over top of them to you know, secure them really nice and good. So I'm nothing to worry about. All I'm using that piece of cardboard for is just to get rid of the excess uh, peanut butter that oozed out when I pushed the cleats up against the, the boat. Same thing as I always do when I lay up my 1708. I wet out where I'm gonna lay my glass into. I wet out my 1708, let it sit for you know a couple, I don't know, a few seconds, just let everything kind of soak together. And then I put my 1708 up against the you know the cleat or you know just wherever I'm gonna put the 1708 in general. And then I use my chop strand brush to push it in place to make sure you kind of work out all the air bubbles that you can with just the brush. And, uh, and then I'll like, I lay up my second layer. If I'm gonna lay up a second layer, then do the same thing with my chop brush, just knock it in place, work out the air bubbles, and then I come in with my fin roller and uh, use that fin roller to really kind of just push everything together, make the pieces of glass into one, and then really get those air bubbles out. And, you know, that's it. Alright everyone, hope you guys like the like that part of the video. I'm actually going to cut this floor episode up in, into two parts, kind of make it a little easier on myself, instead of just rushing around with my head cut off, because it's kind of what I've been doing lately. Uh, so yeah, this is part 7. Next one, when I finish bonding the floor all in and get the filts all made up and tab it all in and everything, that'll be part 7.5. You all get that episode, so make sure you guys... Um, like, comment, share, subscribe the whole nine yards. Uh, you know, subscribe to Hot Action Fishing and Fat. Thank you again. You all have a wonderful week.